kind of child says that? <laughs> Hello everyone and welcome to Anime Club After Dark, the podcast that delves into all things anime, manga, and otaku culture related. I'm your host Alex, but you can call me Senpai, and joining me tonight we have our czar of source material, John. Sylphie, best girl. <laughs> and our chivalry of Shota Shotaro. Hey, Flop. <laughs> what? <laughs> what? What you doing, Flop? How you oh feeling, flop? I don't. I'm, I'm too old to understand these references, man. Uh, it's it's funny because my my mother, before I was born, used to do like she was a character actor at a theme park, and she played a bunny called Flop. So I don't know if you're trying to like dredge up some memories of my mother. Why would he know that much about your personal life? <laughs> <laughs> he listen. Show constantly surprises me with how much he knows. Sometimes. <laughs> I would never kink shame you, Alex. Oh, God. It's my mother's show. Oh, God. <laughs> Oedipus. <laughs> Moving on. <laughs> Tonight, with all this fucking weirdness, we're... What are we What are we even doing? Hold on now. <laughs> we're, <laughs> we are going to be doing a spoiler cast for Mushoku Tensei, a.k.a. Jobless Reincarnation. I feel like I have to make that distinction because every time I say Mushoku Tensei, a lot of people seem to think I'm talking about Slime Tensei. Because they hear Tensei, and they're like, oh, yeah. Yeah, the only part they hear is Tensei. <laughs> Can I just say Jobless Reincarnation is such a stupid title? Yeah, it doesn't I mean. It sounds so dumb. It has nothing it to do with, like, anything. <laughs> it, it does have a subtitle, which literally translate to, translates as, I will seriously try if I go to another world. Which, I mean, okay. it's not any better. <laughs> Love that uh yeah th- we're gonna be talking about this tonight um as i said it's a spoiler cast so anything and everything at least from the first part which is the first 11 episodes of the anime adaptation is up for grabs as ter- in terms of spoilers um so before we do actually really get into it i do want to mention that john has read both the original web novel for this and he's currently reading the manga um however the anime adaptation is an adaptation of the light novel, which is, I, from what I hear, slightly different. But John has promised that he will actually be, even though this is a spoiler cast, he won't be spoiling anything past what the anime has already adapted. Yeah, I won't spoil what the anime has or has not adapted yet. <laughs> mm. Now, he will mention some stuff that maybe the anime skipped over, though. Yeah, <laughs> it's mainly going to be uh, that, my, my issues yeah. so far with... Because Mushoka Tensei is... What, what what was everyone's first reaction when they first started watching us? Okay, like, I know, Alex, you hate Isekai, and Sho, you I just do. hate everything. So <laughs> I'm not a big fan of Isekai either. All right, so uh, I, I just want to get your reactions to it first. Like, because I remember I've been to, me and Jason have been talking about Mushoko Tensei, because I've, I've said this multiple times, but it was the first web novel I ever, like, started reading and finished. So mm. it's got a special place in like my memory banks of like it wasn't that bad of an experience. So I, I I'm quite enjoying the anime, though I have a not a lot, but a, a couple things to say about it here and there. But what did you guys think? I was like when they announced the uh, premiere of this, I had assumed that he was going to be in his kid form for like a couple episodes and then he was going to be aging very quickly and we're going to like see his life story like progress very quickly. And I thought that was just stupid. So I was like, I don't want to do this. And like as the episodes kept releasing, I kept seeing more fan art of him still in his kid form. And I'm like, oh, is he the, just a kid the whole time? So I'm like, okay, you know, he, he looks cute. You know, I can watch this. So when I put up the first episode, I was quite impressed at how well the animation and art and everything of it was because I thought this was going to be trash. (laughs) But it is like the production value is quite higher than I think the quality of the plot is. (laughs) (laughs) Okay, I, I would definitely agree, yeah. I was gonna, I was um, gonna say that I oh, go yeah. if you had some more go ahead. Um, I mean that was just my first impression. Yeah, I, I was gonna say I when this 
got announced and when it while it was first airing i really had no intentions of watching it like john you said it i'm not a huge fan of music guy there's only a handful that i even watch um mostly because i feel like it's just a tired thing that's been used up so much and like there's nothing new about it um but then i started hearing what people were saying about it and you're gonna roll your eyes and I say this people were talking about how openly horny all the characters were and I'm like hmm maybe I should check this out this seems like it's my kind of thing yeah that's one thing that they definitely did not tone down which was just all the rampant sex um, of the <laughs> of the family members and stuff like not with each other kind of I mean his parents bang in like the first episode <laughs> and we get to hear it in all its glory and the voice acting stuff and it's just like you don't get to see that very often in um in animes where it's just like straight up there's just people banging it's just part of the universe <laughs> no i yeah. definitely like that i mean some of the etchy kind of turned me off mostly when the main character was being perverted because i don't know it was just so half assed it's like he tries to be perverted sometimes but he doesn't go through with it and it just feels awkward. It just feels awkward to me. I mean, if you were socially awkward, it kind of makes sense, though. Can you understand, Alex? <laughs> Shut up, John. <laughs> oh, fuck. <laughs> Struck a nerve. But yeah. anyway, no, I was talking to someone in, in our Discord server about this, too, because, like, this, the whole um, the world or whatever that this takes place in, it, it's very much reminiscent of, like, medieval Germanic culture and like a world and i was talking about this with him and he's like back in those days when you didn't have all these distractions to entertain you like what did you do in your spare time you probably fucked a lot i mean yeah and- as a as like a five-year-old <laughs> no no i'm talking about well i mean maybe, oh you but- mean the parents yeah i was yeah. perfectly fine i i i love the parents fucking that was that put a lot of that like make me immersed into the world because i'm like you know, it makes sense that they would, it's, and, like, not a lot of the shows show that, but now they're showing it, so I'm like, okay, this makes sense, you know? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it, and the fact that there's, like, I think it's in, the, what, the second episode where you get to see Roxy fingering herself outside the parents' bedroom? Yeah, that... <laughs> I mean, that was a bit much. I was so confused. I'm like, why is she there at night in the first place? How, what? So... Uh-huh. I don't know if I should say... <sighs> <laughs> it's like i like how he has to everything he says now it's like hmm this wasn't in the anime is this a spoiler well they don't it's not it, it they skipped past it because i don't think they were like we don't really need a reason to know why roxy got up and the only reason she got up was because something stupid she had to get up for water or use the bathroom or something and she was on Wait, her way back so, so she lives with them i didn't understand that she yeah lives she's with a living yeah tutor. she's yeah, live in teacher. Oh, live-in I didn't tutor. understand that. I thought she just came to tutor and left. Oh no, no, no. Okay. she she lives with him for like what was it like two years, three years? Okay, that makes more sense then. I think it's like a year or two. I don't remember. I don't know. It, yeah, it, she, it, it's a significant amount of time. It, it's longer than like a week. Uh, but yeah, she's like a live in tutor, and that's why she was always there. Yeah, they definitely don't shy away from all the edgy stuff because. You know, when we get to our main character, it's like, yeah, he's reincarnated. He was a 34-year-old neat that just, like, cranks it to lolly porn when, during his parents' death, like, funeral. I was so confused. Like, when that happened, I was like, is this underage or is it not? I was so confused. Uh, I think it... When they showed it in the anime. I think it's supposed to be just ambiguous of, like, this guy is just a fucking pervert, you know? Like, he's a degenerate. Yeah. He's cranking it yeah. to porn of, like, supposedly younger women when his parents' funeral is happening. Like, that, that... And it was kind of weird that in episode one and two, they showed only a little bit of what happens for, like, the... Oh, uh, so that... Okay. Honestly, I didn't connect the dots. I'm like, MTC in the funeral? Some people with baseball bats coming into his room? Yeah, so... I was like... I don't know why they split it, it into... Make it make sense. I don't understand. <laughs> I don't know why they split it into two different episodes of, like, what happened. Because they get that stuff out of the way in the beginning before he gets reincarnated. Like, mm. in a chapter zero type of shit. So, 
I, I thought it was a little bit weird because after the first episode, like me and Jason were talking and we we're like, yeah, it was weird that they didn't show like all of the stuff that happened to him before. And now we don't really understand why he's so fucked up and why he's so perverted and all this and that. But they did show it more in uh, episode two. But it, it was kind of confusing because it's like, wait, what? You, you weren't even thinking about it because you're like, all right, well, that happened. Now he's in the new world. And then episode two starts and it's like, oh, hey, so that thing that we talked about what, before he died, we're going to go right back to that to show you exactly how much of a degenerate he actually is. And I'm just like, oh my God. weird. Why would you do that? I can't believe he didn't go to his own parents' funeral. Yeah. Like, that is such a big, like, like character point yeah. that they kind of brushed over. Yeah, so <laughs> that's kind of a common theme here with the anime adaptation. But, I mean, I feel like this with a lot of uh, web novel, light novel adaptations where there's a lot of small things that build up to to be a lot. And they tend to skip a lot of that in Mishoku Tensei so far. And it's just, it sucks. I mean, you don't need it to really pick up on uh, anything that's implied. But it just, it's nice to have that character development. So you can truly understand, like, Rudy is truly a degenerate. Like, he, he is in all sense of the word scum, right? Like, <laughs> he's a 34-year-old jobless neat. And sure, he was bullied, and that's why he became a neat. But he chose to be a piece of shit. And instead of attending his own parents' funeral, he's just cranking it to porn. And then his siblings are pissed, and they're like, we don't have to fucking take care of you. You know, mom and dad are gone. We don't have to listen to what they wanted. They're gone, and you're an asshole. So get the fuck out. Mm-hmm. Oh, it's my turn to talk. Yeah, Alex, come on. What? <laughs> I, was, I, was so, no, I was so enraptured by what John was saying. I'm like, yeah, keep going. <laughs> listen, if you want, I can talk about Mushoku Tensei by myself for an hour. But <laughs> I have no doubt that you could. Um <laughs> Uh, no, I actually really like the uh, the flashbacks that you get to his previous life because there's so many isekai where, like, in the opening few minutes of, of the story, like, the person gets reincarnated for whatever reason or gets sent to the new world, and then you never go back to that ever again. Yeah. Like, I mean, <laughs> Slime Tensei is a really good example of that. Like, bitch gets stabbed, and then you never see any of his previous life ever again. Uh, the same thing with ReZero. The same thing with No Game, No Life. The same it, it, it's a it's a tired trope in an isekai it's nice to see an isekai from time to time go back and show you exactly what kind of character this main character was before he came to this new world and like it, it's a great contrast you it's saying how like um his backstory in the real world kind of explains why he's a degenerate and honestly, like, this is one of my biggest problems with the show is that when he goes to the new world, I'm so confused about what he's trying to accomplish. Because, like, part of him is trying to be a pervert in the new world, but he doesn't really dedicate his life to being a pervert, obviously. Like, part of him wants to, like, study magic, but he does he clearly like sidetracks from that goal and does other things instead of going for magic. And like part of him wants to develop a relationship, but then he sidetracks, like he's all over the place. And I don't know what he's trying to do. Like, what is he trying to accomplish? <laughs> and by the end of the season, I kind of, and now that you like told me the subtitle of the, t of the show, cause I didn't know the subtitle of the show. Um, I kind of get that. Maybe he's just trying to like live a productive, like, I don't know, better life. life yeah, that, yeah, yeah. A, like a, a better life, a than job, he had. a life with a job. <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, no, I, I feel like I feel like, I, I definitely understand that because it feels like the it doesn't feel like he has like an end goal in mind when he starts out in this new world, right? It's like I'm just gonna try and live my best life, and then he kind of gets forced into having a purpose by the end of this this first season. What's his purpose? What did he get forced to do? Oh, to like free the guy from his, from his infamy. Um, yeah, I mean that's one of them, of course. I guess. But like, okay, like especially compared to a lot of different isekai, like they get reincarnated and they have a set goal and they work towards that goal. And it yeah, kind of like kill the demon lord. And it kind of like pull. I don't know about that. It kind of like pulls together like the plot and like it's easier to follow. But with this, I'm just confused about what's happening because I, I don't know what he's trying to work towards. And I get like he's trying to have a productive 
working life, I guess. But I that kind of goal just feels a bit boring to watch because it's just, it just feels all over the place. So there's a little bit. It's because they skipped over a lot of the um, monologuing that Rudy does when he's a kid um, about why he's trying and why he gives up. Like, so before he dies, um, he saves that. Uh, he he goes and saves those kids that are about to get hit by a truck coon, right? Mm-hmm. And um, there's a little another basic isekai trope, by the way. Yeah. So the reason he even saves them, like you would think, well, you're a fucking thirty four year old neat degenerate and like why did you why would he out of nowhere just want to save these kids and that's because while he's walking out because he got kicked he got beat up and kicked out of his own house he's cursing like his parents for dying he's cursing his siblings for kicking him out and he's overall you know just playing a victim and then he starts realizing what a piece of shit he's actually been so then when he sees the kids like about to get hit he's like well even though i'm a piece of shit i should at least do something one good thing in my life and that's what sets him off to go down this route of, I want to be a better person. <clears throat> and early on, he discovers, like, magic, for example. He's like, oh, my God, there's this world that has magic? And <clears throat> you learn that he actually has a, um affinity towards learning it. And he keeps trying really hard, and he's getting rewarded for that. And then, you know, he gets a tutor and all this stuff. And <clears throat> what we learn from that as well while he's growing up, like, he, he gets to learn a swordsmanship from his father as well. His father is like part of this no sword gods, whatever. I don't remember. I don't care about Paul. <laughs> but he has to learn the sword at the same time that he has to learn magic. But the problem that he runs into is like in his old life, he talks about how he was a piece of shit and he was getting bullied because he couldn't do anything and he would give up and then he blamed the world. He victimized himself a lot and he wanted to avoid doing that in the new life which is why he tried super hard with magic. And then he starts to stagnate. And that's kind of a recurring theme in Mishoka Tensei with um, Rudy, where he'll try to do something he might get good at, he might not be at it, and then he'll stagnate. And then he'll he'll try to drop it, and he'll maybe he'll try to pick it up, but he, he's a real person. you know. And just because you're like, oh, I'm going to learn how to become the master of this thing doesn't mean you're going to become a master of this thing. You know, It takes time and dedication which is something that he never did in his previous life. So when he hits a wall and it seems like he doesn't know what he's doing, that, that's because that's part of his character because he he's trying to train and he wants to be a better person, right? But old habits die hard because mm. at the end of the day, he's still inside. He's internally still a 34-year-old neat that has no skills. I mean, and that's something that's kind of real, too, because, like, in the real world, when people start to stagnate, like, whether it's at, with, at your job or a new skill you're trying to learn or, you know, with a relationship, you kind of get down on yourself a lot. Yeah, and it's just – that's just one of the small things that they skip. It's implied that, I, that that's why he gives up and stuff, but it's <laughs> it's kind of going to cause a daisy chain for more complaints that I have further down the line for the rest of the, <laughs> oh, the series. But um, I feel like the, the most of your complaints can be just be summed up by they left this out. Yeah, exactly. Oh, they no. left this out, and it, because <laughs> it does play a vital role. Like I said, these small things add up over time, mm. and it's not going to be. Is it integral to the main plot of what happens to the story? No, it's not. Okay, I can say that. But it makes your enjoyment so much better when you know more about your characters, when you know more about the environment and things going on, because you get more immersed, and that's kind of the important part. But yeah, <laughs> we've I, and since you mentioned like character building, I, I do kind of want to mention this, too, that um, and this sort of goes into world building as well, that when Rudy actually does get reincarnated in this world, he number one gets reincarnated, reincarnated as a baby and has to go through all the steps of life. And that's how the first few episodes are presented. It's like vignettes into him growing up. Um, I keep going. Oh, I was going to say, um, but he actually has all of his old memories from his old life. So he knows it, he knows how to speak, even though he doesn't have the physical ability to speak yet as a baby. Um, but they also make a point to show that the people in this world don't speak English slash Japanese or any kind of language he's familiar with. So he actually has to learn how to read and learn how to write and learn how to speak this new language. And I thought that was a that's actually great world building and character building because you actually get to see him learn these new skills while and even when he finds out like i have this magical ability but i can't fucking read yeah 
Mm-hmm. Yeah, that was that was very uh, immersive. I like mm-hmm. that. And they they build that out too when you when you find out there's multiple languages in this world. Mm-hmm. All right, so we've been riffing for like 20 minutes about just like the the show in general, but maybe we should start at the beginning about the production and everything. <laughs> um, yeah, so, <laughs> we kind of just skipped I over mean, that. Did you actually did did you have something you wanted to say about what I was talking about this show? Uh, I was just going to say that you, like, um, saying how, you know, he was reincarnated and all this began from a baby. It just reminded me that why, like, him going all over the place, like, skipping between different um, goals in his life was even more annoying. Because I'm like, girl, you literally started, you had one chance at life, you literally started again. And you, like, have all this knowledge. Like, why are you still exploring around and trying new things out? Like, girl, you could have, like, a streamlined life. But no, you're just going to just ploop around and just do random stuff. I'm like, okay, whatever. (laughs) Well, that, again, goes back to because of how he was as a person before when he was that 34-year-old neat. Like, they make it a point in the anime where he's afraid to go out of his own house. Like, he can't walk out of his own yard. Because whenever he sees Mm -hmm. the villagers and stuff... They, you Mm -hmm. know, they turn into those laughing faces and he feels like he's being Mm -hmm. looked at and judged and stuff. And that's why Roxy plays an important part in his growth as a character, which is, again, this is going to be a recurring theme where people in the show are going to play. I don't know. (laughs) Like, okay, I definitely really enjoyed that scene where he, like, got past the illusionary, like, trauma and went past the the gate and went out. Um, But, like... He, I honestly don't think he worked hard enough to overcome the trauma. Um, like, like, yeah, in that moment he did, but like he didn't continue going. Like, he ha- he's just he's just all over the place. He wants all these different things, and he's not working towards one specific thing, and that's why he's bad at all of them. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. So he's like overloading himself, basically, is what you're saying. Yes. So there's also a point where um, Paul takes him out on a horse, and that's when like. There's more character depth and development that was skipped. <laughs> so I understand See, I what you're you saying. I told you guys. <laughs> yeah, guys, just, you know what? TLDR, just read the just novel. Go read the honey. novel. Just fucking oh do God, it. I hate it. I hate it. Uh, <laughs> but going back to the production stuff, before we get too much deeper into the story, yeah, we kind of just skipped over that. It's written here. Uh, I, it's worth pointing out that this is being produ- the anime adaptation of Mashoku Tensei is being produced by a relatively new anime studio called studio bind uh studio bind is actually a joint venture between white fox and egg firm i mean white fox we all know uh probably most uh popular recently or most well known recently for doing the re-zero anime adaptation um they're also the studio behind steins gate um and then you have egg firm which is more of a production committee a production slash planning and management committee i mean they are they have been on the production committee for several uh anime um most recently besides mishoku tensei they were on the production committee for sword on light alicization gun gale online um the remake of kino's journey so they've been around for a little while too they're they're more on the business side of anime production more so than the actual uh, production side um, but uh, like I said this this studio was set up specifically for the purpose of animating this uh, light novel adaptation uh, so that's that's crazy that's something we've actually seen a couple of times recently as well like I'm a, Wit Studio was founded solely to make Attack on Titan um, was it Studio Shuka that was founded to finish off Durarara I think it was Studio Shuka, wasn't it? I think so. Yeah. I could definitely uh, tell that this was like a new studio because they went so like out of their way to pour all the production value they could into this uh anime. Oh yeah, so, like, and it shows. They're trying to make it they're trying to make their debut really big and uh, it definitely it definitely showed. Yeah, remember when we were we were doing the preview and you were like, "Honey, this is held up by glue and string." And I was like, "Oh, well, maybe." <laughs> maybe. <laughs> Cuz you never you can never tell with a PV, you know, like Yeah, yeah. 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 
But I definitely did to not. Be, to be fair, though, the PVs that they came out with, or at least the one that that was out by the, when we were doing the season preview, did not make this look that great. No, it didn't. And I definitely was surprised at how well they animated this. Like, first of all, White Fox doesn't make like super great action scenes, in my opinion. But that's fine because Mushoku Tensei doesn't have that many action scenes. To be honest, mm. it has action scenes, but it's not like an action oriented show like if if you think this is all about like getting powerful and fighting the demon lord type of shit no you're you're in for a bad time this is about like character redemption and growth <laughs> yeah uh, i mean that that brings up a good point like i mean the art and animation is is pretty good i would say it, it's pretty high quality especially the background art the background art is gorgeous in some shots i don't know they like paused on these like shots of nature and be like hey, look how beautiful this is and i'm like it's all right <laughs> like they really wanted to emphasize the nature shots and i'm like i mean it's all right it's not crazy what else i really <laughs> like i love the opening bit how it's not actually like it's not an actual op where it just shows the same animation it's literally yeah. just the story with like that la da 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 oh god kiss from it's a rose. Like, <laughs> it gives you it gives you it gives you context for this the part of the story you're about to see that's why like the visuals are different every time that you see it because it's like playing in the background of what's going on with what you're about to see yeah well like when the op starts it's like literally 20 different folk instruments trying to compete to like play the <laughs> play the song it vaguely i'm like oh god like, there's a lot happening right now it vaguely sounds like the seal song <laughs> it does every time i hear it i think of that song <laughs> um i will say staying with like the, the music um i john i you might say something about this too like i genuinely thought it sounded a lot like the original score for spice and wolf yeah because it's like that it's it's old adventure timey music you know like the, the with the flute and the fucking yeah. like i don't know how to describe it other than when you hear it it's obviously supposed to be like an old um like not tavern i guess medieval like medieval, medieval yeah music. like just medieval music. What what we assume to be medieval music. That's what it just sounds like. <laughs> yeah, it's got a lot of it's got a lot of wooded instruments. It's got um, a little bit of strings and like no piano, no no uh, a little bit of percussion, but not like it just it's got that sound to it that you think of like Middle Ages sound. And it 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 fits into the story great, I think. Um I was going to go with this. Oh, um so this Anime adaptation is being directed by Manabu Okamoto, uh, whose previous only director's credit is the anime Gamers. Um, he's also done episode direction on uh, stuff like Kamega Kill, Darling the Franks. Um, Such a great library. <laughs> I know. He was an episode director of uh, their first season of ReZero. Uh, he also was the ED director for ReZero. Um as many times as you see that ed uh but he doesn't have a whole lot of credits to his name um so it'll be interesting to see how this all ends up going um and the music as i mentioned is uh being done by uh yoshiaki fujisawa who has previously worked on a lot of stuff that i think people will recognize dimension w no game no life zero gate land of the lustrous uh he also has done a lot of music work for the love live series Uh, make of that what you will well i mean the music's Uh, not a bad point like at at no point do i think oh man this music is bad right mm. i definitely don't think it's impressive like it's nothing that i'm like oh my god i'm gonna go download this track afterward like i had with overlord but yeah it's not bad yeah it's not bad no it's not it's not um what else is i gonna say oh and uh i I didn't write this down but the uh the studio themselves that are making this have said that they are planning on doing like a complete adaptation of the story of mishoka tensei so i mean that's something to look forward to and they've said that it's going to be multi-seasons long how much has this adapted so far According to Mal, and I'm pretty sure this is a typo. I was mentioning this before we started. It says that it's it, it adapts volumes volumes one through twenty six. That can't be right. It says it has to be chapters. Uh, 
yeah of the manga and volumes one through three of the light novel it's the first three volumes like it's just it's 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 done like the typical like th- four episodes per volume like just mm. and timeline and how many more vol- volumes do we have to go like 21 <laughs> Uh, yeah, so in the original uh, so the original web novel the original web novel is twenty five volumes. Uh the light novel which is currently publishing has a total of twenty four so far. I feel like this like studio wit burning out with Attack on Titan is gonna be studio bind burning out with Mashoka Tensei, honey. I hope I, not. It might happen, who knows? Um I don't know. We'll have to wait and see on that. Apparently there's also a a game a mobile game coming out from Ashoka Tensei later this year I did not know that um, there's also a four coma manga what the fuck yeah I don't know about any of that but... gotta milk that cash cow honey I, I guess I guess apparently there's also a Roxy spinoff manga it's called Roxy gets serious oh uh, so okay. <laughs> I like the Roxy spinoff manga though because it's because we get to follow Roxy and see what she's doing. Because we don't, you know, she's not the main character. See how many doorways she fingers herself out of. Three. Wow. <laughs> I like how you came up with that. I don't know if it's true or not, but it works. Well, because you'll have to fucking read it to find out. <laughs> oh, man. Um I mean, that's that's pretty much it for the whole production aspect of this. I mean, I, we could talk about the character designs as well. I mean, I don't know. Would you guys say that they're anything, like, incredibly special? They're definitely better than I expected. Because, again, I expected a trash show. So (laughs) I honestly think the character designs were really well done. I think they did, like, the shading and, like, the the way that the faces animate really well. Hmm. I think that... um, So based off of the light novel, like, illustrations and the manga illustrate... Based off of the manga, really, it... It's very similar, like the design. They didn't change anything. They didn't make it too round or anything like that. It's looks basically the same to me. I could be wrong though. <laughs> Someone will tell me I'm wrong. I'm sure. Of As it. he's probably furiously go look at the panel from the manga. It's like, no, I'm right. I'm right. <laughs> well, I'm looking at the cover of the um the first light novel volume right now, and looking at the character designs of Roxy, Rudy, Sophie, mm. Zenith, Poor Maid, and uh, Paul. <laughs> Oh, she's so whore made. I don't remember her name. <laughs> oh my god. Lilia? Is it Lilia? <laughs> oh shit. I can't Listen. I forget her name too, but that's fucking great. Listen. Yes, it is Lilia. Okay. <laughs> she seduced Paul. <laughs> it was very Again, apparent. All the characters all the characters are so horny. <laughs> Although, think about it though, if you she's because she's like a living maid, right? Like, if you had to hear them bang as loud as they do all the time, wouldn't you be a little horny? I thought that was gonna be a bigger like plot element with the with the babies from different mothers, but we just completely like teleported to a different yeah. Rudy, Rudy okay. like resolves it like literally with five sentences. But uh... no, but I I thought that would be like, I thought that was like the premise, and then now that we have like the babies, we're gonna it's gonna be an interesting like, you know, like a dynamic. Uh, yeah, dynamic between all of them. But no, <laughs> they play in a they play a part later on. But um, like the whole Lilia and Paul thing, <laughs> there's a reason. They'll tell you later. Just wait. <laughs> Just wait. <laughs> there's so much going on. So much. <laughs> Um, but yeah, so in, in the story, I guess going back to that, so once we get through the first few episodes and we see Rudy, like, you know, learning about the world and, uh, you know, learning some new skills with Roxy and everything, um, and then befriending, so we haven't even talked about Sylphie yet. Um, so we want to talk about Sylphie, John? All right. Uh, Sylphie, best girl. That's all you need to know. Moving on. <laughs> okay. Moving on. <laughs> No, I mean, I, I like that whole... Because Roxy gives um, Rudy that whole warning about, like, if you ever find someone with green hair and, like, a, a gem in their forehead, uh, run away. And it's, like, it's really foreboding. And, and he just kind of takes his face value. He's like, okay. It's like, you seem to know what you're doing. I'll listen. And then he finds Sylphie. And it's like, Sylphie's got the green hair, but no 
no gem in her forehead. So, I'd like to point out that Roxy helped Rudy overcome his fear of, like, just being a neat and just walking outside. And um, it kind of helps with, like, there's something that Skip Paul, when he's riding out with Paul on Paul's uh, horse, a lot of people say hello to Paul. And that's when Rudy realizes, like, these people aren't actually looking at him because they're trying to make fun of him. They're just like, oh, it's Paul, the guy, the knight who protects our town, you know? Mm -hmm. He's being respected. And these people staring at them aren't just like, oh, Oh, look at that guy. This kid has never left his house before. So it helps him get over his psychological trauma. And, um, mm. you know, Roxy and Paul do that. And then when he meets Sylphie, he, like, at first he's like, oh, that, I shouldn't bother. Like, they're being bullied and I don't want to get involved. And it's kind of, it dredges up the past. You know, he was bullied like that too. And a lot of people just watch. They didn't really step in and try to protect him or anything. Because they're like, well, I don't know who you are. Also, you're fat and ugly and, like, this and that, you know, for whatever reason. So, Rudy sees... Which kind of happens a lot in real life, too. Yeah, it does. And you like, not my problem, not dealing with it. Yeah, and it's really shitty. And, you know, this is, again, where the, you know, we, from the beginning, we Rudy was like, oh, I'm going to be a better person and this and that. But, you know, when it push comes to shove, he bitched out. But then he sees, like, they're about to hit Sylphie with a rock and he plucks up the courage and is like, you know, fuck these kids. Like, I'm going to stand up for someone who's being bullied. You know, the, the weak being bullied by the strong, which shows more growth for Rudy. And that's Sylvie plays a really big part in his growth for that because he finds affinity with someone else who is also an outcast. Because Sylvie, because of her, first of all, we don't know it's a her until later on, but Sylvie is a girl. Um, but Yeah, you don't find that out until they try and take a bad together and he pulls her pants down. Yeah. <laughs> and then he gets a, and then it just instantly does like a hard cut right to Paul and Rudy in the bath and he's like, Why did you do that? The line when he was describing that was so confusing. He's like, It's not a white saber, but it's not a black sword of destruction. And it's not this, and it's not this. And I'm like, wait, what the fuck is happening? I'm so confused. I literally thought she had no genitalia. And and then and then it finally got to the point where she had a vagina. And I'm like, honey, confusing. <laughs> <laughs> well, because, again, Rudy in his past life has never seen a real vagina in real life. You know, that's, he's only seen it in porn, so... It's his first time seeing a real live vagina. I just didn't get the get the euphemisms. <laughs> Cause he was shocked. He was trying to process what just happened. That was like, it was confusing. <laughs> also, he genuinely thought that Sylvie was a dude, so <laughs> Yeah. He's like he thought he made a guy friend. He's gonna actually have a friend for once in his life, and turns out it's actually a girl. He's like, I just stripped her and now I see her vagina and I he just can't process it. Because again, 34 year old need, never seen a naked woman in his life. It's also, like, you mentioned, like, he's such a degenerate, yet the first thing that he feels after doing this to her is, like, shame. Yeah, because in this life, he knows shame. <laughs> that's, yeah. That's part of the thing. I feel like if that had happened in his previous life, he'd been like, all right. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. I don't know. He was a... I mean, he, f he flip-flops between all right and, oh, no, this is bad. Yeah, like... <laughs> He's super perverted, and I, I understand that a lot of people hate that about him and hate the show because they're like, oh, why is he sexualizing these other little kids and this and that? And I'm like, because he's a 34-year-old basement-dwelling nerd who jacks off to lolly porn. Like, what do you expect? It's more annoying that it's, like, so out of the blue. Like, it's... Like, you say it's part of his character, but, like, it really doesn't define his character except for these very small moments where he's like, oh, I'm just going to become a pervert now. It's like literally a light switch that turns on and off, whereas mm. literally in every other scene, he's, like, a polite person that's nice and, like, a good child. As like, I, th that's what annoyed me a lot, too, is that, like, the etchy wasn't, like, full-blown. It was just, like, sprinkled here and there. It's like... That annoys me when Etchy is... I like Etchy either full-blown or not there. I don't like the sprinkles, girl. Don't give me sprinkles. <laughs> I think, listen, if you tell them to go, they'll probably go further with the Etchy. No! There, wasn't there, like, a scene where, like, he tried to, like, uh, like, get with the redhead, and then he saw the ring, and he's like, never mind. I have a conscience. <laughs> yes. 
And yes. I'm like, so he he has limits, but these limits are like so like so stupid. I I don't like the 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 way that they put the etchy in there. I think it's like stupid. See, that's understandable. Like again, he's so when he acts polite and normal, that's him trying to make sure he doesn't fucking act like a complete degenerate. Because you know, again, thirty four years of being a degenerate, um, and it's just because. It's just part of his character. Yeah, I can't really explain it other than he, he deep down he wants to be perverted and just like touch all the girls and stuff, but he knows he shouldn't. And that's the key difference. It's relatable because like you say 34 years of this learned behavior of being a degenerate neat and then like he it's not surprising that when he's in this world and he's trying to be a better person, he has these moments where he's like, hey, hey, hey I'm going to touch the titty. Oh, no, I can't do it then. Yeah. Uh, okay, that's just, okay, that is, like, not real character development, though. Like, it's literally a light switch that goes on and off. It was If it was, like, properly, you know, he had an actual, you know, dilemma and actually went through that, then it would make more sense. But the way it was done in the anime was not deep at all. Eh, I I have to slightly disagree with that. I think it, it's you're watching someone try to unlearn 34 years of learned behavior. That is not what I got from what I saw in the anime. I don't know. Anyway, um, moving on. Since you mentioned the redhead heiress, uh, I'll move on to uh, another part in the story. So after he gets his, you know, he meets Sylphie and befriends Sylphie, and it's it, it's it's definitely implied that he wants to be more than just friends with Sylphie at some point. Yeah, he develops um, a little crush on her. Yeah. Yeah. I also like the pep talk that Paul gives him right before Sylphie comes over that one time. And he's like, yeah, you got to do this. You got to do this. And, and and Rudy's like, yeah, yeah, I can do it. And then he points over and is like, so go do it. And Sylphie's standing right there. And he's like, oh, no. Yeah, because <laughs> he doesn't know how to handle women. And once he finds out that Sylphie is a girl and he needs to apologize for, you know, stripping her naked and stuff. He's just like, I don't know how to handle this. Uh, yeah, so he wants... While he's training with Roxy, Roxy tells him about this magic academy that he can go uh, attend one day if he wants to, and she highly encourages him to because of his aptitude for it. Um, but it's also very expensive to go to, and he realizes that his parents don't actually have the money to send both he and Sylphie, who also has some affinity for magic. Um so he wants to get a job to afford it. And so his father, Paul, is able to set him up with a job with his cousin. Uh, is it Philip? I think it's Philip. Yeah. Uh, Philip that lives away. And so he has to actually go away with uh, to go to go work. And that's when we meet literally the best cat girl ever. Oh, my God. I don't yes. know about that. Oh, Ghislaine. Oh, 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 step on me, mommy. All right. Thank you all out there. For... <laughs> anyway. No, I love Ghislaine. She's awesome. And she's voiced by the same uh, voice actor that does Revy. Yeah, I know. In Black Lagoon. Oh. R- right when I heard Ghislaine talk, I was like, oh, my God, it's Revy. Oh, yeah. That's awesome. <laughs> Ghislaine is just Revy without guns. Yeah, actually. Really, she just is. Where's Roku? <laughs> She's Revy with a fucking sword. Anyway, so one thing that they do skip over um, that's kind of a big development thing is that so when Rudy talks to Paul about uh, going over to the Magic Academy, they're like, well, we can afford it, you know? He's like, well, Sylphie can, is learning magic too, and she's actually pretty adept at it. Can she go? And Paul's like, well, we can't afford to send both of you, which is where Rudy's like, well, I'll pick up a job. And Paul's like, okay, sounds fair. But then that's where Paul, he, he has a lot of inner monologue that gets skipped in the um, anime and the manga. Because I, I get it. It's not really integral to the plot. But Paul has a, a, a conflict inside of him that he can't be a good father to Rudy because Rudy's kind of already a grown-up. He never cried as a baby, and he kind of just solves everything on his own. So that's why like Paul doesn't know what, or how he should treat Rudy because it's like my kid is smart and knows everything. How do you discipline a kid who can talk back to you like that? You know? So this is one of the moments where Paul actually thinks about it. And it's like, well, I think Rudy has a dependency on Sylphie and he's going to stagnate because right now he doesn't want to leave Sylphie. And he says that if he can't, 
go to Magic Academy with Sylvie, he's not going to go at all. He was willing to give up everything and not pursue his own talents and his own interests because he wanted to stay together with Sylvie. And Paul sees that as like, it's a bad thing for both Rudy and Sylvie because if Sylvie is used to always having Rudy there, what's going to happen to Sylvie when Rudy's not there? You know, she's going to collapse. She's going to get killed. She's going to, everything bad that can happen will happen to her when Rudy's not around. So Mm -hmm. that's why Paul, uh, instead of sending off Rudy, like just like normal, he knocks Rudy out and then kidnaps him to send him off to go train with, um, or to go work for Philip as a tutor. And even though they did skip a lot of monologues of Paul, I was actually impressed by what they did keep in because as little as it was, it's more than I expect from like anime parents. I'm like, oh my God, you have more than one dimension. You actually (laughs) have conflict in your mind. You actually have like struggles that are not related to like, or that are not like, that are your own. Oh my God, that's so interesting. So that was definitely uh, helpful with, like, keeping immersion. But what wasn't helpful for keeping immersion, like you said, was, like, uh, Rudy acting not his age and not, like, a seven-year-old or whatever age he is. Because, like, he would make so many comments about, like, oh, should you say that to your six-year-old son? (laughs) It's just, like... What yeah. what kind of child says that? Like, he's even <laughs> yeah. trying to hide about being a complete weirdo. Well, one thing that they added in, they did add a little bit of it, is where Lilia was like, ever since that child was born, I thought he was possessed because he would always stare at my boobs like a lewd little piece of shit. And I always <laughs> hated him. But then he saves Lilia when, you know, the whole I'm pregnant with Paul's baby thing happens. I so. just can't imagine, like, if someone is like reincarnated and they're like six year old six years old like what would possess you to act like like why would you say that to a seven-year-old like that's like the most the worst acting i've ever heard in your in my life like could you not act a little better like i don't i don't understand how he could say those lines so there's a reason why paul and zenith kind of just overlook a lot of the weird things that rudy does but it's kind of it's spoiler territory, so I'm not going to mention it. But I hope they bring it up. Um, they probably won't because it's again not integral to the plot. But it makes for better uh, explanation. There is a reason. Just just going to put that. Out I'm there. more concerned <laughs> that like like the personality of the main character Rudy, like it just doesn't make sense for him to say those lines. Like someone in that position wouldn't say those lines. That sounds like a very, something like the author would say. No, like I said, uh, Lilia points that out. Like she, she does make Uh it a whole, like he creeps me out because he says things that don't match up to what a kid should be saying. So it's, Uh it, it, the only reason like everyone else kind of gives it a pass, like Rudy or uh, not. No, I don't mind the other people give it a pass. I just mind that it doesn't make like, it, it breaks my immersion of believing Rudy as a character. Lily is the only person that points this out like, do you guys not see anything wrong with this? Hello? Yeah. <laughs> and, well, you'll be happy to know that uh, everyone else thinks Rudy's weird too. <laughs> like he doesn't act his age. And they, they do like, you don't act like your age. You're you're supposed to be a kid, but you act like you're not a kid. So again, it's, it's just a special circumstance with his personal family and yeah. Sylphie because Sylphie doesn't know any better. She's she innocent. Yeah. She protect you protect Sylphie. Protect. Only protect. Only protect. Uh, but yeah, uh, so moving on, I suppose, to uh where he actually does go to his job. So he gets a job being essentially a magic tutor as well to um I guess it would be his second cousin. Yes. Would, yeah, because Paul is is or uh paul and philip are cousins that would yeah that would make eris rudy's second cousin uh um, aren't they brothers family paul and philip yeah i thought they were brothers okay. no wait that would yeah they were cousins yes yeah. they're cousins um yes not second cousins cousins first cousins um so he actually goes to to train her and then when we meet her we find out she's a stuck up spoiled little bitch yeah, she's the fucking worst. I hate Eris so much. <laughs> she's got the rich kid syndrome going on, doesn't she? She's it's because she's spoiled, and there's a reason for that. Like, uh, she gets spoiled by her grandpa, the the true patriarch of the Grey Rat family, 
is the grandpa because he's the lord of the so he gets he goes to a main city and turns out that the city is run by his family turns out that his family is actually like nobles that they're, they're lesser nobles but they're still nobles and his grandpa is like the main patriarch who founded the city and saved everyone or whatnot so and Eris is like doted on by the grandpa so no one really can say shit to her because you know the, her grandpa literally runs the city <laughs> yeah uh, but no, like the 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 next few episodes kind of just take off with that idea that he's just here to teach this girl who does not want to be taught. I like how he has to actually prove himself to her first before she'll even have anything to do with them. And so they orchestrate this like, all right, well let's get her kidnapped and I'll be the one to rescue her thing. And then it turns out, oh shit, they're actually trying to kidnap her. Mm-hmm. Yeah, as it turns out, um, people don't like uh heiress because she's a piece of shit (laughs) so then i think in general people don't like the gray rat family that much either (laughs) it it's specifically they mentioned it in the uh anime that there was one noble specifically who's just a pedophile who wants heiress because she's a unruly child because he likes to beat them and rape them so Hmm. i don't think that was mentioned but that yeah i'm pretty sure that wasn't mentioned in the anime that's fine (laughs) oh that's well that's who wanted to uh kidnap her who was like Oh, I think it was like there was one line where it's like they want you politically and physically and I'm like uh, okay. Yeah. Well, they didn't mention the it's it's some it, he literally means nothing to the plot other than there is apparently a pedophile rapist um noble lord that wants heiress. That's literally it. <laughs> so. Yeah. And then you get to see how awesome Gislaine is this during this too like holy shit. Oh, that was a really uh, cool scene. I liked the uh, where everything went black and white. That was and cool. she's running on all fours across rooftops. Uh, no, not that. Well, sure. <laughs> when she did a little technique and then she like, like I don't know, and it went like chrome color, like rainbow color. Oh yeah, like a monochrome color. Yeah, yeah. Cool. The um, yeah. the just laying like I'm gonna do the fucking gods. Northern God style summon technique bladed something whatever. I'm gonna do the the samurai <laughs> drawing my sword and everyone yeah. dies. Yeah, yeah, but it was cool. Yeah, <laughs> like mm-hmm. there's definitely um a lot of because there's different styles of sword fighting in the uh, anime in in the in the book and it's actually cool to see it animated because you can't really you know you can imagine as much as you want but I I don't do sword play so I don't understand like how cool it's gonna look when they explain wait you're a wee but you don't understand sword play what the fuck is wrong with you john um just because i watch (laughs) people do sword fights does not make me a a professional or expert in this field alex please (laughs) for the love of god do not challenge anyone to armed combat you will lose (laughs) oh man um but now and then you get to see over the next couple of episodes him Rudy, that is, uh, being able to teach Eris, teaching her, you know, magic stuff, and uh, also I thought I, this was such a waste of time. I swear to God, I I didn't because I thought it gave context to to both Rudy as a character, and there's also a little world building that's done in these episodes as well. You learn about the fact that there are multiple languages um, that are spoken in this world, and and Rudy's expressed an interest in learning how to speak them, which comes in handy later. I just feel like he could have earned money faster doing other things, girl. Uh, maybe, but again, because of his age, some people might not have hired him. You can make it work. It's the medieval times. There's no, there's <laughs> no age laws. But I also like that episode where they're having the, um, what is it, the fifteenth birthday party for Eris. And they have like that whole ball thing where everyone comes and she's supposed to be dancing with every with someone and like she's shit at fucking dancing. Yeah, and then Rudy <laughs> has to come in and save her. Yeah, I thought it was a great character moment between the two. Mm-hmm. Well, it's because uh, we know that she's unadjusted to high society. Like they make it a big. She's point. a tomboy. Well, not only is she a tomboy and just wants to learn how to do swordplay and become a, an adventurer, but. Again, she she's spoiled, and her grandpa just lets her get away with whatever because he's like, oh, well, you're my cute grandkid. I can't say no. How could I say no to my cute little heiress? You can do no wrong. <laughs> and she is she's self-centered and, you know, has that rich kid syndrome. 
and she's spoiled and that's why she doesn't care about like who cares about manners i just want to learn how to fight with the sword and i'm strong so that's all that matters and it isn't until rudy comes along and starts teaching herself that she realizes like (laughs) just because you're strong in sword play doesn't actually mean you're gonna be the strongest like yeah there is a um they they skipped it in this area but basically if she fought rudy and rudy was serious where he could actually use magic eris would not stand a chance against rudy because rudy has yeah. magic and he he beat paul who's like on par with just lane with when it comes to sword skill i forget which class is like sword saint class or whatever they have like yeah, hierarchy I, for tier hierarchy like emperor and then there's god yeah level. they have yeah there's there's a tiered hierarchy for how skilled you are at, at different skills uh, I think they also have that for magic as well. They just don't that's, really go into it that so much. so D&D, I swear to God. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so at, at the very top is God level. Then right underneath that is, like, Emperor. Then right underneath that is Saint. And then right underneath that is, like, Intermediate, I think. Something yeah. like that. And then there's Advanced, and then there's Beginner. Something like that. Or another. Yeah, but, it, but yeah, it's, it, it's a tiered system. That's the important part. Yeah. Um, I also like during this that Ghislaine realizes that she can't read, and she asks Rudy to teach her how to read. Well, it's not that she doesn't know how to read and um, she wants Rudy to teach her. Rudy just realized, like, well, Eris respects Ghislaine because Ghislaine is a, uh, I believe she's a sword emperor. I th- yeah, she's uh, I sword think king, right I think. That. Sword right. king? Okay, sword king. So she she's very skilled in the sword, and that's why Eris respects her. So that's where Rudy comes up with the pot, like, well, if you respect Ghislaine and Ghislaine wants to learn, then she's obviously Eris is going to want to learn too because she's, you know, she's at an age where she's, copying the coolest person that she sees you know kids are very impressionable Mm -hmm. which is really realistic you know good job i didn't yeah (laughs) you don't really have to add shit like that like to build this character type of stuff and it's actually just very interesting (laughs) because this this entire novel is really all over the place like show was saying like is it actually about rudy then we get to learn more about the world and we get introduced to so many different characters and there's so many different things and there's kind of a, a running theme an overarching theme of why we see so many characters and it's not just because like well i guess you could just say it's because the author needs to throw an out for rudy to learn a lesson but each person that he meets and he interacts with he learns more about like patience about becoming a better person and things like that and it's just mm-hmm. to stop the stagnation Wait, what did he learn from eris we'll get to that <laughs> later oh he definitely he, he definitely he definitely learned a little bit of restraint because there's a point during this sequence of episodes where she's ready to let him fuck her and he's like nah man well this all right so the uh after the 15th birthday party comes to an end and then they they welcome rudy and they they finally welcome in, him into the gray rat family with that whole like mm-hmm. hey rudy it's your birthday happy birthday and everyone finally opens up to him which was weird because they didn't show any character development for like why uh eris's mom and eris's grandpa don't like rudy so basically uh paul he decided i don't want to be a noble i'm just gonna go and be an adventurer so fuck you guys and he kind of just disowned himself and left and you know that was kind of a spit in the face because paul should have done everything philip was supposed to do but instead he ran away to go fuck off and do whatever Hmm. so that's why his grandpa doesn't like him because it's like oh my own son forsook our family and ran off to go play with girls and then um (laughs) the reason why (laughs) eris's mom didn't like rudy that one was just kind of mentioned in passing but basically she couldn't have a kid she couldn't have a son and she's always wanted a son and she was upset that uh paul was gonna transfer his son over and then philip was okay with it because eris's mom was like why can't we have our own son why did you have to accept something from your stupid brother? So that's why she hates him mm-hmm. at first. But then she realizes, like, he may be perverted, but he's still a good kid who's trying his best to adjust. And overall, yeah. he's been a positive, like, a f- he's had a positive effect on Eris and stuff. So that's why he be- he gets welcomed. It- it's a bigger deal in the novel. They didn't make it that big of a deal. And it's one of those turning points for Rudy where, it, like, he his his hard work is kind of paying off, you know, where... He's actually being accepted by other people than the family that he's known. You know, basically, there's only four. There were only four other people in his life that cared for him, slash he cares for, 
I guess Lily accounts too. All right, so like, yeah, no, that's four. No, Roxy. All right, so five. There's five people. <laughs> I have to count. Six. There's like a lot of people. In the no, there's only five people in his life so far, and that's why when he transferred over, he didn't know what to do, and he was just like, oh, yeah, it's one of those tired tropes, you know, fucking Ojo-sama, spoiled piece of shit, this and that, but he, he just... He learns to adapt. He learns to adjust, and he's accepted, and he he gets rewarded for that. And that's why he cries, because he's, like, he's being accepted. Even though he's weird and perverted, he's being accepted. And it's a big deal for him. It's a big deal in general. But they kind of it, just... It, it's funny. It's funny that you use the word turning point to describe that, because that's literally the name of the episode where that happens. Yeah. Well, because then afterwards they... <laughs> Here's the turning point... <laughs> Um, yeah, it's called and it's called Turning Point One, which implies there's going to be a Turning Point Two. Yeah. So uh, and then uh, mystical magic shit happens, and now all of a sudden, Rudy is teleported to the Demon Continent, and I believe Eris is with him, with no just yeah. lane in sight. Yeah, I mean Bro. it all it all kind of gets like I guess kicked off by the fact that Rudy is trying to uh, like show magic off to to eris like with like the thing that he did with roxy the one time that made everything go um but of course all this happens there's like some kind of like magic sphere or something floating around the city where they're at and uh it activates when he does this magic thing and sends everyone in all different directions but somehow rudy and eris are together that isn't really explained why they're together and gizlane isn't even though they were together when it all happened um, I'm sure that'll be explained later. The most heavy-handed plot twist I've seen. Ugh. <laughs> that was not a good... Change. No comment. Well, honestly, I no like comment. where the plot went. I don't like how it got there. <laughs> well, I, I, I'll i just... Let me just say, it wasn't Rudy's fault. Um, I didn't think it was. Me neither. <laughs> there is plot reasons for why this happens, but I, again... Uh huh. There's... I haven't seen them yet. <laughs> Show me the receipts, John. I'm not gonna spoil it for you. <laughs> I will say before they actually materialize on the demon continent, uh, Rudy has an encounter with someone who calls himself the Human God, and during this scene, he actually reverts back to his old like character design, although it's kind of in silhouette and his original voice. Yeah. So mm-hmm. um, I thought that was a great. It was a great choice. He meets Hitogami. They don't actually name the Human God. Or actually, he calls himself the human god, so Hitogami. But, yeah. like, they, they don't name him in the show for some whatever reason. I'm not sure why. Because Rudy's like, who are you? And he's like, oh, me? You can just call me um, Hitogami. God. <laughs> you just call me God. Yeah. And it's like, hey, there's going to be something super weird that's going to happen, and I need you to take my advice. When you meet this next person become his friend and Rudy He's doesn't like, think you're anything gonna of not want to be his friend but just trust me yeah so like honestly I like okay as like forced as like the god giving you advice out of nowhere is and it's like a bad idea to do I do like the advice because it's so it's such innocuous advice it's such a little tiny thing but it really did help so I like I like the specific advice that he gave yeah, uh, and then of course when when uh, Rudy does wake up or comes you know comes to, um, he finds out that the the first person that he sees is actually one of the spurred, which is the green haired people with the gym in their forehead that Roxy told him like if you see this kind of a person run the other way, and she was telling him all kinds of stories about how terrible that they are, and the um, the first thing you realize is this guy is not that bad. <laughs> Well, no, the first thing you realize is, holy shit, it's a superb. He's going to eat your babies. <laughs> and he kind of does. Like, he's, he's, Rijard is super scary looking, okay? And he kind of just, like, kills everything. And he doesn't really care. It's like, are you bad? Then you die. You know, that's kind of his whole character. And he scares the ever living shit out of uh, Rudy and Eris because everyone has heard stories from the demon continent about the specific demon race uh, tribe called the superd who literally went crazy and killed everyone like it's been over i don't know 100 years 50 years 200 years i don't remember how long it's been 
it's been a, a timeline, like a long time since the event happened that made everyone scared of the Superds, but everyone is still scared of them. And for good reason, because they have super high combat ability. And it's it's weird that the first thing that, that happens when you meet Richard is that it, he looks at these two kids, Rudy and, and Eris, and he's like, no, I'm not going to hurt you. I'm going to protect you. I'm going to get you back to where you need to go. Now, where are we going? Yeah, it, it's just like, what? And like, like and Rudy's like, this is not this is not what I was told. What the fuck, Roxy? Yeah, and it's just they don't spend enough time before they drop off on the first core, like telling us anything because this is where they start using more of the um time skip cutscenes. What what am I trying to fucking say? Montage. Um, montage. Thank mm-hmm. you. They start using montages, and I'm just like, oh, they're cutting all the stuff where Rudy learns about you know more about Rujard and his story about like why the Supard race are actually cursed and this and that and uh. They miss so much. I feel like in these last three episodes uh, of this part, I, I feel like there was a, a lot of like context that was skipped over. I don't know how important all of it was going to be, uh, but I feel like there was probably some stuff we learned or would have learned about the spirit that like would have would have facilitated the world building a little more. Now, I'm giving it the benefit of the doubt, and I think just because based off how they did episode one and two, Maybe they're going to split it into the second core and explain more about this pard race and stuff like that. Maybe. Because they it's an important thing, man. <laughs> they better not skip this. I swear. They can't do my yeah, boy dirty like they, this. They said that they have, like, cursed spears. Is, is, there not, is that not all we need to know? Uh, there's a little bit more for Rujard personally. Oh, like why, personal why does he um, protect yeah, yeah, the kids? Yeah, the purse. God. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um. I also thought it was cool we actually see where Roxy was born. Yeah, that was... <laughs> and, we, and we find out she's super old. <laughs> yeah, so as it turns out, people from the demon continent, uh, demons live longer than humans do, obviously. Mm. They live, like, hundreds of years. Yeah. Um, and it was kind of cool to see her birthplace and how they, uh, the pe- her people interact with this bird. Like, the, it's just, like, something that they see every day. So, like, it rolls right off their shoulders. Um, I also kind of like the, the last little arc that we get where, um, Rudy and Eris and, and Roger go into like the village and become, uh, essentially hired mercenaries. Very yeah. typical, like fantasy, but I yeah. do enjoy that. And they, they, they adopt the name dead end. <laughs> dead end. Very Which is, I, I think it, it, Forgive me if I'm wrong, because I I think they talk about how that's like a a slang term or like a I don't know if it's supposed to be a slur for what the spirit are the dead end. No, mm-hmm. so specifically speaking, it's um dead end refers to Rujard because he's the one of the only super that's walking around and like being seen, and mm-hmm. wherever he goes, he kind of he he early on you find out that he just likes killing things that are bad. He's like. Well, they're bad, so they die. And that's mm. like his train of thought. It's just that simple. And that's why they say if you run into him, you're going to meet a dead end. Yeah. Because he's pro- – if you're well, I mean, you know, these people, these adventurers, quote-unquote adventurers, they're all kind of sleazy people. Um, and <laughs> you learn that. Like there is a couple of them that are just like really shitty and just shitty adventurers, shitty people. I don't, they're not really people. Like the horse guy. You know, he was like, yeah. hey, I found out your secret that you got. You guys are doing something illegal. If you give me a little bit of this cut, you know, I'm not going to report you. You know, they're just being shitty. Yeah, nice to see BoJack Horseman got a job. Not bad. <laughs> I, did, I did enjoy the whole, like, you know, backstabbing and, like, everyone's out for themselves plot line. That was mm-hmm. interesting to see. And there's also, like, not all of the adventures that are there are also bad people. Yeah, there are a lot of them, but there are some who are genuinely trying to do good, and they get mixed up with these people. Oh, like yeah. the kids? Yeah, like the kids, like the ones that they come up on in, like, the, the dungeon or whatever that they're trying to clean out. Like, uh-huh. they're genuinely trying to do good, and they fucked up. I also like with this arc, it shows that, like, you know, Rudy can make mistakes, and, like, thinking too much, like about um 
what the optimal thing to do and this is exactly how it's gonna happen that can fuck him over and people can die so that was interesting to see yeah it's like with the the horse guy he gets to a point where even in, in his internal monologue he's like what do i do what do i do this is not going how it should have gone it's like i'm yeah. gonna wipe out the entire town <laughs> and then all of a sudden you get roger and he wipes off his like the uh the hair dye that he put on that was just like i guess disguise him um it, and then, it hit his green hair so he they painted it blue because yeah. green hair and the demon continent green hair means you are a support like that's yeah that's just how it is yeah so um and then i i like how like he immediately washes that dye out of his hair and everyone in the town that's around them just shits themselves collectively well, yeah, because, again, demons live a long time. So even if this Supart event where they went and murdered everyone 200 years ago happened 200 years ago, they all probably lived through it. So they all still remember, yeah, the Supart are fucking crazy. Also crazy yeah. strong. They could kill all of you. Maybe. Yeah. And one thing about Rudy is that he's not typically overpowered. Like, I wouldn't say he's he's not overpowered like your typical like MC is overpowered. Mm-hmm. Like, he doesn't solve everything by just... Oh, I'm just going to summon the power of friendship or I'm just going to I have an untapped well of magic that can problem yeah. solve everything. And it's just it's a nice development. Like, as you know, I, I love overpowered MC trash. So <laughs> it's weird that I would like some guy who actually isn't omnipotent. Yeah, and actually makes mistakes. I do enjoy yeah. the fact that he doesn't have like a special power that is his own thing. Like it makes it more believable and interesting. Yeah, the only thing that's really special about the magic that he does is he doesn't have to like do an incantation to make it happen. That's literally the only special thing. But it's not even special. Like other people can do it too. Yeah, other people can. It's just an incredibly rare talent. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So um, that's one thing that I thought in the beginning that they were gonna go with, like, oh, he's unrivaled because he knows how to do chantless magic. But as it turns out, no, people can learn how to do chantless magic too. <laughs> yeah, it just takes for for a lot of people. It just takes a lot of. Uh, training at least that's how they kind of in, they approach it so far like very few people are born with the ability to just do it well the whole reason behind you know what i'm not gonna get into the magic <laughs> yeah don't, that's i feel not, like you're gonna get into spoiler uh, territory here like more spoilers than we want to get into yeah um, <laughs> I, I do i do however like how the 11th and final episode does end where um you realize that a lot of other people know what's gone on uh, outside of, you know, Rudy and Eris and uh, Roger about, you know, the big burst of light that happens and everyone gets scattered. So people are actually looking for each other and they know they know somewhat about what's going on. Um, and like the last bit you see is that, you know, Roxy is uh got together like a party of two of Paul's former companions and they're going out to look for Rudy. I, I, this definitely sets up what the next part of the anime is probably going to be about, or at least part of the next part. Girl, I didn't even realize that the light teleported them elsewhere. I thought the father just traveled there on his own. I'm like, okay, girl, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, that was not explained properly, okay? Yeah, I'm sorry that everything needs to be spoon-fed to you, show. Okay, yeah, I'm I don't sorry understand. About that. that means it isn't explained properly. Context. <laughs> context i mean um, they they definitely do skip a lot of things but like i said to the core of the story none of it was important like it's and like just... okay that light happened like in a completely different town why would the light go all the way to the village okay. in, the, in the boonies okay so um oh not this because you didn't pick it up <laughs> the light didn't happen just in the the boonies it happened everywhere it was a worldwide it happened, yeah, event. It happened everywhere all at once. Yeah, at what the same time. What do you mean? Time. It originated in the sphere that was in the in the capital. There were m- multiple spheres around the what? world. Yes. <laughs> Did you pick that up, Alex? I I I kind of assumed there were multiple spheres, or at least the the big flash that happens, everyone saw it. I didn't know necessarily there were multiple spheres, but yeah, I gathered that there were that everyone knew that something had happened because there were people who weren't around where they were that knew something happened. I think Alex is just easy to believe things. <laughs> he wow. can Anyways, suspend his okay, his disbelief long enough to understand. But they go into it more. They they call it the Great Teleportation Event. 
Love when that. this happens, but it happened worldwide. It wasn't just in specific areas. Okay, great. Yeah. Um, but no, I I feel like this. It was a great setup to to what's what's gonna come next, and I feel like a a significant part, or yeah, I'd say a significant part of the next bit of the manga or the manga of the anime is probably going to be revolving around people trying to find each other okay i don't want to harp on this but like if (laughs) if everybody was teleported (laughs) then why are the demons in their homeland no not everyone it's just certain events so there were just spheres, <sighs> okay, okay around the world. Whatever. <laughs> I'm, I'm sure. I'm sure this will be explained later. It is. Ah, oh, God, I can't. I can't spoil it though. It's. They're, it's explained. Just don't. Just. Just don't worry about it. Just, show. Just don't yeah. think about it. You know, just it just happened. Don't, don't question it. Um, but now, so this is basically how the first half ends. I. I, now, one thing John pointed out to me on Mal, the next part that's coming out, which comes out later this summer, um, is listed as season two. But the anime's official website just listed as the second half of the first season. I'm inclined to believe the actual website um, over. Yeah, because originally it said it was supposed to be 26, episodes? 23 episodes, 20, or 23. And we only got 11. So this is like one of those split core type of deals. I yeah. wouldn't call it a season two. Though I guess you could say it's a season two because it doesn't happen right at the next season. You know, there wasn't a, a break between the two. Yeah, girl, yeah. parts eh, whatever. Parts don't exist. It's all seasons, honey. It's all seasons. <laughs> um, season one, part one. No. But yeah, the, I mean, and, the, and like I said earlier, the, the studio that's making this has said that they're planning on making, that this is going to be a long-running thing, so... Uh, I'm sure we're gonna get more. I'm. I don't know what you guys are expecting. Well, I, uh, John knows a lot of what's coming. I'm sure. <laughs> I know what's um, coming. <laughs> but I'm definitely expecting more time skips for sure. Um, I don't know with what frequency. What um, do you mean time skips? I mean, I'm. I'm sure. I'm sure he's not gonna stay this age that oh, he is right now okay. for much I don't longer know about in the that. story. I think he's gonna stay that age for quite a while. Uh Man, I don't know. I I, would, I know I all not, the answers. <laughs> I I would not be I would not be surprised to find out that there's another time skip somewhere in the first few episodes of this next part. Well, I, I'm just hoping that you guys have have enjoyed the first season so far. I was gonna ask. So, I mean, John, John, you've read the source material, so I'm wondering what do you think? What are your thoughts so far on the anime adaptation? Honestly, it's not too bad. Um, I obviously I've. I have complaints about a lot of things about the show because there's just so much context that you miss out on because they don't explain things properly and missing these inner monologues and stuff is kind of important. They do keep a lot of the inner monologue in, but for the side characters, they, it seems that they've decided, you know what? These side characters don't play a major role in the story, the overarching story. So we're not going to get into it, which is, you know, that's normal. Uh, Honestly, I didn't expect it to look as good as it does. So I'm glad for that. Uh, and, you know, the music is very fitting. It's, it's very medieval. I like it. <laughs> I do, too. Uh, <laughs> show, what are your thoughts on it so far? And are, do you plan on keeping going? Hmm. What would you give it out of 10, John? Uh, as an adaptation, I'd say it's a solid 8 out of 10 as a stand. Wow, that's high praise coming yeah, from you. Yeah, that is high praise, girl. Yeah. That's just because, like, it's good. Like it, even if I never even read the manga or the uh, web novel, I would have probably picked it up after watching the show. So, I can say that with confidence. That's super high praise coming from you, then. <laughs> well, because the art is pretty, the music's pretty, and I'm kind of interested in the plot. And you got Sophie, <laughs> Sophie, best girl. <laughs> Um, so do you actually plan on keeping going with the anime show? Cause I know you haven't read any of the source material. Hmm. Should I say what I thought of it? Yeah. I mean, yeah, you can tell that too. Um, well, so I do like the general premise of isekais, even though I don't like the actual, a lot of actual <laughs> isekais. Because... I like isekai, but I don't no, like No, I like the idea because, but oh. like the, a lot of, isekai shows execute it poorly but okay i think that this show did a much better job of executing it especially in that it spent so much time when the character was like a kid and like it shows 
uh, in like painstaking detail him growing up, and I I did really enjoy um, all the all the time that they spent, you know, develop developing him as a as a kid. So I did really like that about the anime. Unfortunately, again, my biggest problem was that it just feels all over the place, and I don't know what the MC is supposed to be accomplishing. And also, I feel like the side characters are like, I could they, I could throw them away. I don't really care about them. I don't. <laughs> they, they have no development or no uh, development that I care about. Uh, that's just pointless to me. Um, but the the visuals are really nice. I do really like the visuals. So I will give it a 6 out of 10. And I don't know if I... Honestly, when I finished the last episode, I was like, do I really want to watch season 2? Do I really? So I'm on the fence if I'm gonna continue this. Eh, I'm fair enough. I'm I'm surprised at John's high score of this. Really, I am. <laughs> and what did you think, Alex? <laughs> I so I, as I said before, like I had sort of low expectations going into this, but then hearing other people talk about how good they thought it was, I, that's why I decided to give it a try. I was very pleasantly surprised, giving given my you know, preconceived notions about what this show was going to be, especially considering it's an isekai. I generally am just so burnt out on isekai. I won't even give most of them a chance anymore. Um, Mm -hmm. I'm glad I gave this one a chance. I do like the characters. I like, uh, I like the world, uh, the world building. I think like John has said, they're, they're leaving some stuff out um, that I feel like maybe could be, could have been a help to the anime a little bit if they'd left some of it in. Um, but a lot of the stuff, as John has mentioned, that they have left out is not super important. It just helps with the world building. Uh, overall, I like the I like the music. I like the art. Um, I just I like it so far. I really do. It's it's an isekai I didn't think I would like going into it, and it's it's got me excited for another isekai. Like shit, you're you're getting me to like something that I don't genuinely like. Yes. Good job. Mission accomplished. <laughs> I think I, I right as it stands right now, I think I would give this the same score that John gave it, eight out of ten. Wow. Interesting. Um needs more <laughs> horny. <laughs> well find out next time. Dragon Ball Z. <laughs> I feel like so I, I, I will say I will say one thing. I feel like if there is going to be additional time skips, like I do believe there is, there's definitely going to be more horny coming up soon. Who knows? I know. I'm not going to say anything, though. <laughs> He's yeah, going to die I mean, that's... at the age of 15 on his birthday. Oh, God, no. <laughs> uh, Maybe. Uh, who knows? <laughs> uh, yeah, that's 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 Mishoka Tensei, Jobless Reincarnation. Um, I'm sure we'll do another spoiler cast for the second half of this or second season or whatever you want to call it once it gets finished airing this summer. Um, well, time will tell whether show will actually be joining us for that or not. <laughs> well, yeah, uh, I don't know, girl. I'm I'm certain that at least myself and John will be here. Uh, yeah, I can't wait. I can't wait to see where it goes, and I definitely hope you guys will join us for that. Until then, thank you all for dropping in to listen to us. Check the description below to find links to Anime Club, After Dark on Twitch, on social media, and on Discord. Check out our merch store and our affiliate links as well. Any purchases you make there do really help us out. With that, I have been your host, Alex, and I will see you next time. Say goodnight, guys. Good night. Good night. Now, if you will excuse me, I must go pray to Roxy's holy item. <laughs> The holy relic. The holy relic. I said item relic. I must go pray to Roxy's holy relic. Yeah.